Hello and welcome. Today I have with me somebody who doesn't need any introduction. Stop that. <laughs> <laughs> welcome. Well, I just would like to welcome Sir Martin Sorrell to the Exchange for Media. Good to, good to see you. Thank you. How are you doing? Thanks, I'm fine. Fine so far. And how is Towns? What are you expecting from Towns this year? Um, pretty much the same as last year, I think, probably. Maybe with a bit more of a tech emphasis. So AI is the way to go? That's well, what people you're are saying. People are saying, already saying humor is going to play a bigger part this year. I mean, obviously, there'll be a, a, a tussle between tech and creativity. Uh, there'll be a, a, a group of people who will, will be focusing on tech. There'll be a group of people fo focusing on creativity. So there'll be, I, I, in terms of attendance, attendance is very similar to last year. I think about 12,000 people. I think the nature of the people has shifted a bit. There are more, uh, there's a new pass called the Creators Pass, so okay. for influencers and people like that. So I think there'll be more people just like just like that. Uh, some talk about senior executives not being as prevalent here as, I've seen in marketing executives not being as prevalent here as, as usual. I'm not sure that's true, but we'll see. Some, some new people here. Adobe big presence here. We were just announcing our arrangement, our new partnership with Adobe. Um, FIFA here on the beach for the first time. I think Univision are here in some uh, significant scale. So there are some new new entrants, but it's um, the same old, same old. I think in in many respects, you've got the tech companies here with an even stronger presence around AI, and I think the biggest single feature, uh, the, the thing that people will be very focused on will be personalization at scale, building models, highly personalized content creation models using data at super scale, which will require clients to change their organization. So I think that's probably the biggest, the biggest thing. I'll come back to personalization later, but you know, uh, there's something new in Khan this year. What you mentioned was the co uh, content creators. Yeah, sure. Do you believe that having influencers involving influencers also, are we spreading ourselves too thin or is this the new addition or do you think we should refrain from having influencers on board also? No, they're content creators. I mean, you're, get, you're going to see a democratization of knowledge through AI and democratization uh, at scale. Uh, through AI, so it's it's only fair, I think, and right to have creators of all types, uh, of scale, uh, and individuals uh, represented here because it is a, a vital part. The social media part of the industry is growing at, uh, at, at at a great rate, so I think it makes sense. And if I was organising Can, if I was Philip Thomas or Simon, I think I probably would do the same. Uh, now, you're a proponent of the power of the unitary model. Do you believe a unitary model is the need of the R today? Well, I think it, it, it's certainly the way that if you look at the holding companies, they're trying to go, obviously, they, uh, often they can't get out of their own way in order to do it, but they are moving that way. And if you look at the academic work and consulting work that's been done on the power of unitary brands, and McKinsey recently did a study uh, pointing out how well Microsoft, for example, had done under Satya Nadella, and it's very different the way he runs Microsoft as opposed to the way that Steve Ballmer ran it before. Steve Ballmer tended to run it as separate units, which, you know, there are some really good examples in other industries of people running uh, separate units inside companies very successfully. But the McKinsey study did seem to indicate, I don't know how they came up with the figure, but if I remember rightly, the headline was that Microsoft or others are 24 percent, to be precise, more effective by being unitary. I think there is a strong case for unitary organizations to be more successful than those that are split either by geography or capability, or in our case by by client. So bringing everything together as one, I think, does make huge sense, and you do get huge traction as a result. That's reinforced by AI, and, and there are five impacts, in my view, of AI on AI industry, visualization and copywriting, hyper-personalization, so personalization at scale, media planning and buying, 
general efficiency and democratization of knowledge. And democratization of knowledge is going to have a huge impact on building the effectiveness of single brand companies by people being able to share knowledge at all levels is almost a revolution from below in terms of knowledge so it's no longer about working in silos but put, uh, putting together a uni well, unified really, really good people inside organizations are, are you know you, uh, usually they're, they're good but they don't share knowledge um, they don't share information they don't cooperate and i think what ai is going to do is ensure they do so if you were to advise, say, a larger ad group company, a holding company with multiple agencies, brands, how should they evolve to remain relevant? Well, I, I think they, they have to create one organization um, and not just by sort of a spreadsheet analysis at the center. They have to build it. I mean, you, you can't do it by just a stroke of the pen or sitting in uh, New York or London or Paris and do it, you have to implement it. I mean, if I look at Publicis, for example, whose performance certainly as a holding company over the last five years or six years uh, has, has outperformed the others, you know, why is it? Well, you can say they have a, a, a good, strong leader uh, in Alpha Sadu. You could say they have a good story around data and digital. And I think they probably, of the holding companies, moved, they're not one publicists as, as they say but they're, they're trying to move towards that yeah, the other holding companies have had a much more difficult time in doing that omnicom has, has eschewed that i mean they're basically omnicom not interested in that they have their separate units they're very good people and they've probably been the second best best performer uh, ipg i think of are having a tougher time certainly in the account area they've um, They've had some missteps recently, but they do have McCann, which is probably one of one of the, if not the strongest single brand uh, company. Um, WPP is struggling with it. You know, slamming together brands does, doesn't work. Uh, it has to be done on a much more careful basis. Can't be done by a stroke of a pen. Uh, Dentsu, probably their their international businesses. The part of that's non-Japanese businesses, the part of the business is struggling. It will be interesting to see what happens with Avas when it's spun off from Vivendi as to what it does. But having single brands, I think, is the way, the way to go. But how do you deal with com having competing brands, that is, competing clients? Is that going to be a challenge? Well, I think that is, that is largely gone. I mean, I think clients accept uh, separation even within a brand. I mean, the the... the Paradox has been they accept it from McKinsey, they accept it from Goldman Sachs. Um, those why are single brands. Why, why not? not? Why not in our case? And maybe it's because we have things like CAN, which are public displays of um, of um, l l lack of, of sharing confidential information, if you like. Um, but it, it, it is a it is a, a paradox in our industry that and maybe that's our own fault for not to, for not treating it in the way, but. The investment banking industry, the consulting industry, they work for competing clients and they work at very high strategic levels, True. both both in terms of um, theory or, or strategy and in terms of execution. So it's always been a puzzle as to why we were held to a different standard. You spoke about AI. So how is it, how do you see, in, say, in the next five years, AI impacting both the marketing, advertising, and the agency business? Well, I think it's going to be shorter period than that. I mean, it's already impacting visualization, copywriting. It's al already impacting. I think the biggest thing at CAN this year will be hyper-personalization, personalization scale, and the, the use with the deprecation of third-party cookies, the use of first-party data to develop personalized content. Uh, media planning and buying in the next three years, I think, will be revolutionised. You won't, you won't depend you know, on twenty-five-year-old media planner or buyer. You will, you will basically be working with um, algorithmic execution, and the outputs will be far more effective for human beings to use. I mean, the human mind can't can't deal with all the permutations. Algorithms can, but the human mind can evaluate. The, the, the impact of those algori algorithms or the, the output of them in a much more effective way 
general efficiency is going to be affected immediately. It is now and in, and in the future. And then that last area, democratization of knowledge, uh, will st slowly start, start to see that build and organizations be revolutionized in terms of the transfer of knowledge within them. Uh, you mentioned, you know, the 24-hour, 25-year-old uh, media planner would yeah. probably, his role would be redundant. Any other roles you see in this, uh, in the agency side of the business well, that could be redundant? If you go through visualization and copywriting, I think the, the speeding up of the process will inevitably mean fewer, fewer people. Uh, in the area of hyper-personalization, there will be more. We will be selling more assets. And the other thing is it will switch the model for, to an output model rather than a time-based model. I mean, if the time shrinks, obviously there's, there's pressure uh, on, on fees as a result. If you can switch to an output-based model, there will be big opportunities. So hyper-personalization, more important. Media planning and buying, I think there will be a re revolution there and be a, a sharp reduction uh, in employment there. General efficiency, probably opportunities both ways. Some squeezing, some enhancing. And then finally, democratization of knowledge will give us the opportunity to deploy more people. Overall, uh, I, I, I do think there will be a reduction over time. We'll see how it pans out. I mean, 100 years ago, people looked at automation like John Maynard Keynes and said, we'll have more holidays. I think he was right, but he was probably a little bit 100 years too early. In a recent interview, you mentioned that the tech platforms are encroaching on big clients of clients of the big agents. I didn't agents. say they are. I said they will do. I think the relationships between the tech platforms, and by the platforms, I mean the big six. That is Alphabet, Meta, Amazon, Alibaba, Tencent, and ByteDance or TikTok. Those are the big platforms. Then you'd have to add Apple and Microsoft, NVIDIA, Musk, is never out of the equation. And then Adobe, Oracle, and Salesforce. Those, I think, will be the big players that will benefit from AI. I don't think people fully understand that AI demands very significant financial resources. Building LLM models really demands very significant resources, which means that the big will get bigger. So if we think of NVIDIA being a $3 trillion Microsoft, Apple being $3 trillion companies, these are as big as countries, big as the UK, if you equate market cap to GDP, they're going to get bigger as a result of this, which raises all sorts of issues from a regulatory point of view. I think self-regulation is going to be the, the key, and not, not government-imposed regulation. I and mean, the only way the government will be able to do the regulation, they won't be able to keep up with these companies, is by wholesale um, change like they did with AT&T and the baby bells or they did with Standard Oil. But in, if they're going to tinker with re regulation and not go the whole hog, then I think self-regulation is the key for the major tech companies. That is where the restraint has to be exercised. And we've seen it before with privacy and brand safety. And I know that Meta, for example, comes in, for, I think, unfairly for a lot of criticism but they do have 35, 40,000 people monitoring their editorial content. I got my headline, self-regulation is the need of the hour for the tech companies. <laughs> but uh, moving on, uh, what's the market sentiment that you, now we are at Cannes and what's the market sentiment that you're generally seeing globally? Well, uh, uh, everybody when they come to Cannes feels more optimistic naturally uh, with the weather and the, um, the excitement around it. But I think generally, I mean, if you look at the forecast of the industry, most of the analysts are forecasting you know, upper single-digit growth, 5 6% growth for the industry, which in an inflationary period may be, not, may be understandable. But there, there's a, a two worlds. There's a linear world which remains under pressure. If you look at what Warner is going through, Warner Discovery is going through, what Paramount is going through, what Disney is going through, uh, that's on the one hand. And on the other hand, digital, which continues to expand, despite the fact that tech companies have probably pulled in their horns a little bit on advertising and marketing spending, the, the, the tech companies in terms of their ad revenues continue to grow. This year, the industry will hit a trillion. Of that, 300 billion will be in linear. 
traditional media, and 700 billion will be in digital, of which Google will probably be about 250 billion, uh, Meta will probably be about 150 billion, and Amazon will probably be 60. So those three platforms you know, are the drivers in the West. Uh, in the East, obviously, Alibaba, Tencent, TikTok, ByteDance, I think it hit 120 billion last year. Uh, TikTok outside outside China probably will do about 35 billion this year versus 20 billion last year. So these are the big platforms. Snap, six and a half billion. Pinterest, about four. Walmart, I think, in its wall garden, three billion. And Microsoft is doing about 15 billion in ad revenues, and, and Apple about nine. So those are the the dynamics, but you can see the six big platforms are really dominant. Uh, what's your outlook for India, especially since we now have a government which is a coalition government? Much to my surprise, um, not to not to some commentators, to be fair, in, in India. I was surprised by the result. I thought uh, Prime Minister Modi, who I think has done a brilliant job with uh, India and India branding, but obviously is a bit more controversial internally. I think India will continue to prosper as the alternate to China. I mean, the, the China, if you're big in China, if you're 15 to 20% of your sales in China, like Apple or Tesla, do you really want to be bigger? That's the, that's the big issue. Uh, if your records at 7 or, or I think it's 7% of their sales or Unilever at 9%, you probably want to be bigger. So it's a question of, I mean, I saw a very interesting article this morning about the spin-offs that many companies are doing in India because of higher stock market valuations. Um, I think Korean car company, for example, is is spinning off its, its Indian subsidiary. If you look at the valuations of the subsidiaries of companies like Nestle or Unilever, the valuations are huge. One, one company um, sold stock in India and did a buyback on the Topco, which was at a, low, a lower valuation. So you're seeing an extraordinary multiple expansion some of it's to do with uh, illiquidity of markets uh, and narrowness of the market and the arbitrage will, will even out over time but some really interesting opportunities i think uh, in india and i would still continue to be a raging bull on india uh, now let's look at media monks india they actually netted 100 crores in revenue in less than four years of the agency's yeah. inception so are you pleased with this performance yes i know there's always room for to, to do even better but yes i think we have a good we have a good base there but we have to be bigger i mean in asia as a whole uh we have a, a good business in uh, across asia from 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 Japan through to Australia and New Zealand, but we have to be bigger. I mean, the two things that we have to do uh, is to expand our tech services business uh, and to expand our Asia Pacific business. Uh, you've had some high profile exits yeah. and you have a new team at the helm. Yeah. So what are the plans to steer Media Monks India to become India's biggest creative tech led <laughs> content platform? Well, I think, you know, the, the team there is good. Obviously, Matt, Robbie and, uh, and the team there in Asia and in India are strong and we want them to continue to grow and i'll be out there shortly so i'll, I'll see it firsthand uh what are your top priorities and expectations in relation to media monks oh yeah. well, in well i think you know, it's pretty much what we what we see everywhere i mean our content business is strong and we have to get some of our processes uh and implementation better data and digital media is strong tech services in asia pacific is not it's not really as strong as it should be. And I think we have to expand that. So that, those are the areas that we're very focused on. Uh, you call the ultimate deal maker. What next for S4 in terms of acquisitions? And what do you look for when you're looking at a company when acquiring it? Well, we're very focused on improving the efficiency and effectiveness of what we do. I mean, we have a, a billion pounds of revenue, around $1.2 billion of revenue, very strong relationships of 13 relationships with clients at what we what we call whopper level uh, relationship which is unusual for a company our size our margins are not really where, where we we need them to be so focusing on pricing focusing on billability or utilization uh, and focusing on eliminating duplication is really really important but expanding those big relationships we have 13 relationships which which cover 55 percent of our revenues of that one billion pounds of revenue and we have about 45 um, percent of our business in tech 
So continue to, to broaden and deepen our tech relationships and go beyond that. Is really good. Uh, my final question, I believe that you're a cricket enthusiast. So are you following the T20? Uh, I am. I mean, England just managed to squeak through, thanks to Australia's um, good graces after some initial um, indication there might be some bad graces. But we'll see what happens. We'll, we'll see. India looks strong. So who is who do you think will take the cup home? Um, I have to be careful what I say. I think India. I would fancy India actually. Not England. I would you fancy. You have a good team. You asked me. I told you. <laughs> well, then you wrap up on this note, and I hope the best teams win. Thank you so thank you, much. Thank you. Thank you.